This is the eastern slope of the Sierra Nevada, one of the world's great mountain ranges. On the west, these mountains rise gradually from California's lush central valleys through rolling foothills and thickly wooded slopes. Not here. This backside of the Sierra thrusts abruptly and dramatically out of the high desert, almost straight up, reaching a height of nearly three miles above sea level. This spectacular mountain barrier was not even seen by explorers until the mid-1800s. Then it posed an awesome obstacle to Kit Carson, John Fremont, and other famous guides of the Old West, and an even greater obstacle to the pioneers who followed, struggling with their covered wagons over these peaks and passes to the promised land of California. These early settlers had no time to dream of the valuable minerals hidden in the mountain's rock. Today the mountains are still filled with minerals and still not tamed. The High Sierra holds some of the most extensive wilderness areas left in America. But the wealth of the mountains is being tapped with muscle, skill, and technology. It's not gold and silver that brings modern miners into these high mountains. It's tungsten, an amazing metal that all of us use every day. Tungsten is the filament and light bulbs. It's in the new high speed and painless dental drills and the latest surgical instruments makes your automobile distributor points last longer. It's in your doctor's x-ray machine, and even in the tip of your ballpoint pen. Chemicals which contain tungsten are mixed into textile dyes, inks, paints, enamels, and glass. And it's in the filament of your television tube. It's in the lamp of the projector that's showing you this film. Tungsten is one of the hardest of all metals, and the strongest in tensile strength at high temperatures. It can withstand heat of more than 6,000 degrees before it melts. Tool steel containing tungsten is used to make cutting tools where extreme hardness is required. Tungsten carbide is ideal for drilling, cutting, and shaping other metals, and it's used widely in metalworking machinery. Construction and mining equipment also use tungsten carbide for cutting edges and rock drilling bits. It is alloyed with other metals to provide heat and wear resistance in gas turbines. Rocket nozzles and heat protection shields are among tungsten's aerospace uses. Tungsten, the name is Swedish. Tung means heavy and sten means stone. It is almost as heavy as gold and far more useful. The free world's largest tungsten mine is here on the sheer side of a 13,000 foot mountain on Pine Creek not far from Bishop, California. The mine and mill located here have been operated by Union Carbide Corporation since 1937, providing the nation with its most important single source of the essential metal, and the area with its largest private industry. More than 400 people, miners, geologists, engineers, mill operators, craftsmen, and laboratory and office personnel work at the Bishop Mine and Mill. Many of them live with their families in a village called Rovana at the base of the Sierra. Others live in small communities or in rural areas throughout the county. But most live in Bishop, a residential business and tourist oasis in the high desert 20 miles southeast of the Mine and Mill. The facility operates around the clock and Union Carbide buses make scheduled runs to take employees between their homes and work. From this base at the 8,000 foot level, the operations of the mine and mill are directed. From here, you must go up into the mine rather than down under the ground. Union Carbide's Bishop Mining Operation is an upside down mine. You enter this mine from lower levels and go up inside a high mountain peak to where the action is. Gravity, rather than men or machines, brings the ore down to the haulage levels. The ore is literally dropped out of the mine instead of being hauled up from under the ground. 
The mine is an intricate network of tunnels, elevators, ramps, and ore passes. The large empty areas where ore has been removed are called stopes. The men who work inside the mine are taken in on man trains, small covered railroad cars that go deep inside the mountain where the actual mining is done. This tunnel leads more than two and a half miles straight into the mountain. The tunnels are carved from solid rock and reinforced with steel and heavy wooden beams to prevent any possibility of cave-ins. At the track's end, the miners board an elevator for the ride up through a shaft carved out of solid rock. Elaborate systems of warning bells are used on the elevators and whenever machinery and equipment start to operate. For further protection, the miners are dressed in safety shoes, safety glasses, hard hats, ear protectors, and heavy rubber clothing to guard against the constant 42 degree temperature and the water that seeps through the rocks into the tunnels. The miners are equipped with the latest self-rescue equipment and respirators. Meetings, classes, and training in correct procedures have prepared the miners to do their work safely and efficiently. The light they work by comes from battery-powered lamps each miner wears and from occasional lighted working areas and assembly points. This elevator rises more than 1,300 feet inside the mountain and lets the miners out 9,600 feet above sea level. Tunnels on this level, though, are older ones, and most of the tungsten ore has already been removed. So the miners board a second elevator, which carries them up another 1,500 feet to a level more than two miles above sea level. Here, active mining is underway, but the top hasn't been reached yet. From here, the miners will fan out into different work areas to begin their day's or night's work. The mine is virtually self-sufficient with its own lighting and air systems. There is even a complete diesel machine shop two and a half miles inside the mountain. All maintenance and repair on the diesel equipment used in the mine is done here. Most of these huge machines have never seen daylight. They were brought into the diesel shop in parts and assembled underground. Before a miner begins to work in the ore zone, the rock and ore in it has already been sampled and analyzed by geologists and laboratory personnel to make sure there is enough tungsten to be commercially valuable. The mineral which carries the tungsten is called scheelite and is found where granite and limestone has been forced together under tremendous pressure. When a promising mineralized zone is found, a team of miners comes in to do the drilling, loading, blasting, and hauling. These men are highly skilled and experienced hard rock miners. They come to Bishop from many parts of the world. Many are American Indians, native Paiutes from the Bishop area, and members of several other Indian nations. All are very much at home in this subterranean world. A drilling machine called a jumbo drills two holes at a time into the rock so the dynamite can be inserted. Drilling is done and the dynamite placed at the end of each ship. The actual blasting takes place after all employees are safely back at the assembly point, far away from the blast site. After the blast breaks loose the rock, the big rock movers come in. These diesel-powered bulldozer-like machines scrape up the broken rock which was blasted away from the tunnel's face. 
Lumbering down the tunnels, the machines dump the ore into slanting shafts called ore passes that drop the ore down through the mountain. These ore passes are taller than the Empire State Building. As the rocks hurtle down the chutes, they are broken into smaller pieces by the tremendous drop. At the bottom, 10-ton ore cars wait for their loads. Tons of rock dropped into the ore passes high above come thundering down into hoppers. Miners control the flow of ore, filling each car to capacity. When the entire train is full, it starts on its two and one half mile journey toward daylight. At the end of the tunnel, each car is dumped by a huge rotary dumper into a receiving bin. From the coarse ore receiving bin, the ore is fed into a massive crusher with a mechanical jaw that breaks it up into smaller pieces. The ore is crushed before being dropped onto a conveyor belt for the trip to the mill, where the shelite will be separated from the waste rock and the final tungsten product isolated. It will require more than a ton of this ore to produce a handful of the final pure product. The rocks are carried through further grinding and screening processes, through massive cones into rod and ball mills, to pulverize the rock still more completely. After this fine ore is crushed, it is sent on to be processed further so that pure minerals may be segregated. The ore, now a pulp with water added, is subjected to flotation to separate the sulfide and tungsten minerals from the bulk ore. The shelite particles flow to the top while the waste particles drop to the bottom of the vats. Seemingly endless processes, digestion, heating, chemical treating, filtering, purify and extract the tungsten in the form of a white sugary substance. Some other valuable products are recovered from the ore mined and processed here at Union Carbide's Bishop Mill. Some molybdenum, a little copper, traces of gold and silver. But tungsten is the treasure the people of Union Carbide are seeking. This fine white powder is vital to the economy of the United States and to the livelihood of this entire section of High Sierra, California. This powder is shipped to industrial uses throughout the country for conversion into a variety of products. It provides jobs to more than 400 employees and contributes substantially to the economic well-being of all the people of Bishop and the surrounding area. Metals are critical to our way of life. They are the backbone of modern industry. Buildings, homes, bridges, transportation systems, the very tools that produce our standard of living. Increasingly, tungsten is one of the more important metals. Metalworking, construction, mining, transportation, power generation, aerospace, electrical equipment, chemical processing, are all among the industries making use of tungsten to bring all of us a better way of life. The Sierra Nevada is still an awesome challenge. The people of Union Carbide at Bishop must use increasingly sophisticated technology to take what the nation needs from these mountains. An elaborate and costly purification system, for example, has been installed to process the water that runs naturally from the mine. All the water pouring from the mine entrance goes into this system. Here, the sand, dirt, and other solids are removed, allowing only pure water to run into the creek. The solids which have been settled out of the water are hauled more than 100 miles away by Union Carbide trucks and deposited in state-approved dumping grounds. Scientists on the staff at Bishop maintain constant vigil on the water that trickles down into the mine and out into the creek. A full-time biologist and his assistant 
spend their days testing and evaluating the environment around the mine and mill. Using the most sophisticated techniques, they measure the possible effects of the mine and mill operations on fish and animals and on plant life in the surrounding area. Sensitive instruments give them immediate warning of anything that might create a hazard, however slight, to the ecology. Union Carbide spends many thousands of dollars annually to keep its section of the Sierra a clean, natural place to work, to live, and to play. These people love the mountains where they live and work, and the valley and the desert below. They know better than most of us that the eastern slope of the Sierra is a special place. They know it can, if handled wisely, provide our country with a vital natural resource and still maintain its character as a great national treasure. So they are increasing their efforts to take what we need without disturbing the wilderness and the grandeur of the Sierra. The free world's largest source of tungsten, so crucial to our needs, really does exist in harmony with its spectacular mountain environment so crucial to our national heritage. <laughs>